Hi everyone! Welcome to another uh, episode of Enlighten Up where I interview people who seem more enlightened than myself. Um, this time uh, I'm talking to Hans Laurentius. Hans Laurentius is a Dutch uh, Advaita teacher, yet not spiritual, he just told me. Um, and um, what I've learned thus far is um, he disapproves of any type of search or avoidance or spiritualization or seeking and is very much in favor of self-examination, um, at least to the point uh, if we are still asleep, so to speak. Uh, as the path to freedom. So that is uh, one of the main topics that I want to be talking about with him today. Um, but my first... Uh, and uh, one thing, even though Hans and I are both Dutch, we will be uh, speaking in English. So, my first question to... Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for having us. Yeah, great. Right. And my first question is, would you say that you are enlightened? Uh, let's say I'm not asleep. Enlightened is a strange word, uh, but you know, well, all the words are strange. Mm. Um, were you always like that, like born? No. I was totally entangled in fear and identifications and trouble and depression and so. S since you were born? Like uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I can't remember much before I was like 10 or something. Uh -huh. And then something uh, started looking around and I thought everybody, everybody was raving mad. So then a little depression kicked in lasted for more than a decade and then I started looking into myself instead of what you just said avoiding and rationalizing or whatever so some energy occurred which forced me to confront myself or look at things or feel through things instead of drinking and smoking pot and running around like an idiot so had you joined those people who were raving mad? Sorry? Because you said, like, there was an early point in your life yeah. where you felt everybody else... Oh, no, was I, I just looked around and all these adults, they, they, they projected that they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But I smelled fear and dishonesty and all that kind of stuff. So uh -huh. they were fake. Okay. Which was a shock, because then you have nobody you can trust. Yeah. So... That's what was the first turning point, I think. So uh, would, would you say that at that point you were, like, awake? No, you could observe no, that? Or scared. You... Okay, scared. Scared. Okay. And, and alone and worried. And a few years later I started asking some questions. And then they started to threaten with psychiatrists. Oh. So I shut up. What I kind thought, of questions? Uh, why are you saying this and doing that? What's life about? Why should I worry about the future? You know, why should I get an education? What's it for? What's it about? And nobody had any answers that satisfied me, at least. And I thought I saw that they all got, um, how do you say that, restless when I started asking these questions. And then they came with, well, maybe you should see a psychiatrist, or you're depressed, or whatever. Uh -huh. So I just locked into myself and thought, well, okay, I need to figure this out on my own. Okay. But you didn't buy it, the no. psychiatrist? No. Okay. There was something in me that thought, or it was more like a feeling, if they, they get me, I'm done. What do you mean? Ah, oh, if you they know. put you into like a... Yeah, yeah. Well, then they will give me pills, and, or put me away, or... And they, they will try to force me into being like everybody else. Yeah. So my dad used to say, I am only hearing what you don't want. I never hear what you do want. Well, I 
I don't know what I want. I, I know I don't want to be like you or anything that I'm seeing, you know, trying to get money or yeah. status or relationships or houses or I, I didn't understand what it was about. Uh -huh. You're not interested in the, no. in the conventional... No, I, I thought, and maybe that was not when I was 10, but maybe when I was 16, if I don't figure out what this is about, everything I will do will be wrong. Even though it will give me approval, or, you know, yeah. good boy. Yeah. So, okay. I so didn't... You, you, you kind of removed yourself from... Those people were asking you questions and you decided to... Yeah, I didn't talk about it anymore. Yeah, okay. And then, what happened? I got more depressed and started drinking more and smoking more. What, what age more was this? From 16 to early 20s, I think. Okay. okay. In the meantime, I also started to read a lot. Not, not necessarily, necessarily spiritual books, but psychology, philosophy, and searching. Yeah, you know, yeah. Find, trying to find some answers. Yeah which I didn't find, uh -huh. but what I did find was some thinkers that were asking similar questions like Erich Fromm or Nietzsche or whatever. Yeah. And that was a big relief, I wasn't the only idiot, so <laughs> there were well educated uh, people, successful people in, in a society a way, or yeah. how do you put that, that were asking questions and were critical and didn't buy into the uh, the common stuff yeah. that you should uh, chase or get your hands on. So uh -huh. that was good. Okay. So and, a, and an artist that I knew that was also interesting. And the statue over of the object over there, he made that. But he made also music. So I ran into. We talked about synthesizers before. Mm -hmm. he, he bought some huge synthesizers and I was immediately fascinated. So making music started to be part of my life as well. Reading, making music, being drunk, being uh, a problem basically. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you say you, you recognized that the questions you had had also been asked by others before, so you felt like a yeah, when, Validation I or when, when I read these books, yeah, because in, in normal life, if I ask questions or starting to be a nuisance, they just try to shut me down. Yeah. You know, they didn't want to talk about it, I had no answers, or gave me standard bourgeois answers. Yeah. You've got to study, you've got to work, you've got to have a relationship and a family. And, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, fascinating. Hmm. And then, like, well, was that it? Like, or uh, how did it go from Suffering there? continued, reading continued, writing, thinking. And then what I said before, uh, something changed. So I started um, to recognize that mm. all I did was running away. Mm. Drinking, uh, smoking, hush, or whatever. It, I, I, I recognized that it was running away from something. Uh -huh. Hanging out with friends all the time, going to concerts and pubs and whatever. It was all running away, running away, running away. So at a certain point it struck me that I tried to do anything and everything except stop running away. So then I stopped running away. Uh -huh. And what happened then? Uh, more fear, more horror, but in a more conscious way. So I started to feel it, allow it to happen, and I had something like, I have to figure this out or I die. Oh. So I didn't want to live, basically. But I thought, well, killing myself is always an option. Yeah. <laughs> but have I tried everything I can, I can do? No, was the answer, a sort of inner answer. So dive into it, confront your fears instead of trying to change it or run away or yeah. trying to swap it for another feeling. Or so confront your fear, what did that look like? Horror. Wait, like would you sit down? Yeah, like sit down or, or walk around. It, it could be so intense that you couldn't sit still. So I walked. Okay. And Sometimes then for doing hours. what? Like thinking or feeling? Being, being with it. 
allowing it to happen, trying not to resist it, trying not to think about it too much, because I noticed that it was more like in this part of the body than here, or other in another way, and the, the fire was here and the smoke was here, so the thinking about stuff is usually the smoke and, and not, not the, the pits or the, or the fire itself. Okay. So there was some intuition, I guess, of just going into the fire. And feeling it. Feeling it. Uh -huh. Also noting things down. I always had a, a notepad with me, because sometimes spontaneously something, a sentence or an image or a symbol just came up and I used to write that down. And a few years later, so this, this took, took quite a while when I started to do the energy work, you know, the, the training that I did that we talked a little bit about, uh, they did basically the same, making contact instead of running away, mm. feeling it in the moment as it is, trying to connect. So, but I already had a lot of experience because I basically discovered it somehow. So, for me, what we were doing there was easy. Mm -hmm. I already was used to going to the fear or the yeah. grief or the whatever. Yeah. So I didn't have to learn that, really. And is that what you call the self-examination? It's part of it. That's that's two components basically, feeling into it. Mm -hmm. whatever it is and the other part is uh, investigate your opinions and beliefs you do that too? yes okay. yes. spontaneously yeah okay. always asking questions and writing okay. writing it down what if, what is I what is fear you know not, not just your reactions to it but what is it uh -huh. you know and and that has two components a, a, a sort of information a component and an energetic component. Everything that, that arises is a combination of thought and energy or emotion if you will. Mm -hmm. So that combination you can take it apart. So you can separate the story, put it aside and feel into the energy uh -huh. so without thinking, without a story. Yeah. Or you can take the story, write it down, what is, what is my conviction or my belief and look at it and try to destroy it. Okay, so would you mind taking me through a self-examination? Yeah, like sure. if, if I say, if I give you an example mm -hmm. of something that is currently yeah. keeping me busy, mm -hmm. can you teach me how to do it? Okay. We can try. Okay. Um, so here is the case. <laughs> my The contract of my house ends at the end of November mm -hmm. and then I had this like feeling of what I am going to do is wrap up my life in the Netherlands and finally get rid of all the systems and the laws and I'm going to unsubscribe from everything and pack my backpack and travel the world mm -hmm. yet I'm not sure if this is right or if I want to get rid of something that might actually be benign for me. Like, do I want to flee from something? Um, or is it actually... These questions you're asking now, did they come after this impulse? Yes. Yes, so that's ego. It's always the same principle. Uh, an intuition comes, mm -hmm. or an insight, and then the ego jumps on, and he tries to fuck it up. It's always the same. Okay, so you would say any questions that come after? Yeah, it's all ego. It's all fear. Is, is fear? It's always in the context of, mm, can this be right? Shouldn't I? Uh, yeah. It's a sabotage. So what I'm, because I'm doubting the impulse basically. I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. Well, that's, the, that's the ego. Or is it's it the doubting e the impulse. Or is the ego saying the impulse could be the ego? No. 
it's saying anything to get you away from the impulse. So oh. it will use anything. It's always the same pattern. Okay. Last week, this is a simple example. Somebody comes here, burn out, he thinks, and he also thinks that it has to do with work. It doesn't. It's about not listening. So I asked him a question. Uh, when was the first time you knew you had to move from that job? <laughs> Three years ago. Huh. Well, that sounds about average. People usually take three to four or five years to, to deny what they know, and then they crash. And then I thought, what about your relationship? <laughs> four years ago. So, he was going against the stream, if you will, for four years. That's why somebody crashes. So, he had this impulse of leaving his wife and stopping this work and do what he actually wants to do. And then ego kicks in. If I do that, the mortgage, what will people say? Uh, what about money? Uh, so the impulse get, gets drowned by fear. Yeah. And he trods along until he crashes. Yeah. It's always the same principle. So you're saying you can always trust the impulse? No, not trust. If you understand this, that's nothing, nothing to do with trust. Oh. I just know what the impulse is, and I just know what the ego does. <clears throat> I don't have to trust that. It's it to two totally different animals. I don't understand. I don't have to trust that a tiger is a tiger. I can see it's a tiger. And it's not a bear. It's nothing to do with trust. Trust, the word trust, we use only when we're afraid. Well, I'm not afraid. I just know what is a tiger. Mm -hmm. I'm not totally following, but I'm like <laughs> stuck with the question. Like, <coughs> do I follow the impulse? Yeah. If you want to be free, you do. If you want to play safe, you don't. because you are like um, a, a teacher, like somebody who's no, easily... No, I'm not. That's just what I'm doing. Yeah, you're... I'm not a teacher. It's, it's just a role. A, yeah, it's just a role. Yes. Well, when I walk the dog, I'm a dog walker. Yes. You know? Exactly. But it's easy from your like website and thought songs and so to perceive you as... Yeah, like, sure. I understand. Ooh. Like that. Um, so, always curious, what does a day in your life look like? Uh, quite boring. Yeah? It's getting up, and that's always a struggle. And then brushing your teeth, and walking to the coffee maker, and checking some emails, walking the dog, and then in the afternoon, one or two sessions, maybe, maybe three. Eh, rather not because then it starts to look like work. And then walk the dog again, make some food with my girlfriend, and eat something, and then Netflix. And in between books, I read a lot. Uh -huh. oh, then I go to bed, and I, then I don't sleep, and then I read a lot, and then I sleep, and then I get up again. And <laughs> <laughs> Do the same thing? Yeah, basically. And then, then in, in a lot of the weekends, there are satsangs or weekend events. Yeah. That's it. And that is your, well, you don't call it work, but your, one of your roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things for me start, start to be called work when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. And I don't like doing things that I don't feel like doing. I tried that. Doing what other people want or I don't like it. Mm. So one of the great pleasures in my life is not doing things that I don't like to do. Oh, that's interesting that you say that because you also had very large resistance to, to feeling through Yeah, sure, but, but that was when I was 20 or 25. Okay. I have no resistance of feeling stuff now, so I don't have any problem. Okay. And then I was the problem. 
So I had a lot of work to do, basically. Yeah. Now I don't. You worked through the work. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, that's what it's for, inquiry or, or feeling through things or how do you want to call it, you know? It's to get the job done. Yeah. It's not to make a career out of it or anything. No. Or keep doing that. But you have, like, your satsang and your sessions, they are how you make money, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it just occurred. Uh, it was never the intention. It just happened to happen that way. I started talking to people, saying what I discovered. Yeah. And much to my surprise, they were interested. And then there were more and more. And I wrote something down. And we put a cover around it. And it turned out to be a book. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't plan to write a book. Yeah. But it happened that way. I was cleaning my computer, basically, and there was a lot of material. Oh, print it out. Ah. Book. Book. Uh -huh. And then th six months later, another book. And then more people and more people. And it took up so much time talking to these people that I didn't have time to uh, get a decent job. So <laughs> it turned to be my turned out to be my job. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that you say it was never your intention. No. It's a very hip thing these days, like set your intention. I hear often before yeah, well, like a session. I think that's rubbish. Yeah? yeah. Why so? Intention. It means nothing to me. Hmm. Interest. If you're interested, things might happen. So that sounds valid. Intention is so Too much purpose in it. Mm. Too much. In Dutch, I would say moedwillig. I don't know what the English term is. Leven met voorbedachte raden. It's terrible. Yeah. I'm more like um, allowing things to happen or listening to what wants to happen. We talked about music, you know, and in 2009 or 10, it came back after 15 years. I didn't want it to be back was no intention. One of my daughters was living with me and she wanted to learn how to play a guitar. I didn't have a guitar. So I got a guitar from a friend and I taught her some chords and we started singing some songs that she liked, mm -hmm. of bands that she liked. And then within no time I wrote like a dozen of songs. And then my, both of my daughters said, you should record that because they knew I did that when I was young. And I was full of resistance, I didn't want to get into that, but well, you buy a recorder, you lend a synthesizer, you buy a bass, you buy a better guitar, and you start recording shit, and seven years later you have seven albums. Mm. Homemade albums, nothing special. You know, there was no intention. Yeah, I was interested. Just like feeling into it now, I can intuit that maybe if I want to be intentional about something that it is because it is a bit scary to just be yeah, to just open be. Yeah, to, just to what be. happens yes. so, it, so, so it's like a, a bit yeah. of a, like a, I want to put a, like a layer or something yeah. in between myself and the world that s is a subtle means to control yeah. What happens, or a yeah. way to perceive or filter? Like, was it, I, I feel it has to do with fear and trying yeah. to control. Of course, that's why I hate it. Yeah. <coughs> so, would you say that? So then the question is, who sets intention? Is it is that an act of of ego? Yes, of course. If you just are here. There's no intention, but the next moment occurs, and it tells you what to do. Yeah. If, uh, I walk around in the garden, is a metaphor that I use, and I look around, and I see that those, those plants over there are thirsty. I have no intention of giving them water. I notice that I already have the thing, and I'm giving them water. Yeah. Why? Because I care. Yeah. There was no intention, there was no intention to live here. 
I had to leave the center because I kicked it out. I ended it, and well, then you have to live somewhere else. Yeah. And well, it turned out to be this, and now I'm living here, and I care for this place as long as I live here, and I care for the dog that's that's with us because he's with us, and the woman that's with me because the woman is with me. But there's no intention. No. It just happens that way. Yeah. So intention, like you say, is a control thing, and control always has to do with fear. Yeah, yeah, I can feel that. Okay. Setting, want to go that way. Yeah. yeah. What if life tells you that you better go that way? Yeah. You're not listening again. Yeah. And so, what I notice is that if I think I know better than totality, everything will get difficult. Mm. If I just Follow the tune. It's quite easy. Yeah, totality. So I, ju I just listen. Yeah. So totality. You speak of totality. Um, in my, let's say, in my own personal search, I have come across um, many things that you can be, um, or are instructed to be identified with. Like you can. First of all, be identified with body-mind. Yeah, that's the usual mode. Yes. <coughs> but then, like, uh, I have also been uh, in contexts where you are spoken to, referred to as a soul. <laughs> and then that seems like... Uh, <laughs> An etherical ego. In, yeah. Uh, which is very offensive, of course, to hear because it's because <laughs> it's supposed to be like more um, advanced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's more childish. Yeah. Yes. You don't believe in soul. No. Can't believe in things that don't exist. Mm -hmm. And our concepts that we totally don't have any use for. It's useless. It's just an, an, like I said, an etherical ego. It's mm. still a separated being, jumping around from life to life. We didn't even establish that this is real, and then we are inventing previous and next lives and everything. Yep. For what? And how about you? Have also um, said your nature. Like you have a nature. Yeah, is that so? Yeah. Hmm. Something that just um, like does itself, like sound, like you yeah, make well, music. Yeah, well, indeed, but that's just what belongs to the organism. Yeah. So there were two guys with this artist, me and Boss, and I got triggered by the synthesizers, he by the sculptures. And then it's the organism that gets triggered? Yeah. And that, that's a whole mixed bag of influences, you know, where you're born, what you're confronted with, uh, what your possibilities are, what your fears are. That's a whole very complex mixture of influences and powers and talents. And yeah. Well, and that, that turns out to be moving one person to music and the other to sculptures and the third thinking art is bullshit. I like to beat up people or whatever. Mm -hmm. What his talent is. Okay. It's impersonal. But it sounds personal. Yeah. Because it can be it, different. It, it, sees, it, it seems personal if you look at it and if you view it from a personal perspective. Yeah. But don't forget if you yourself take yourself to be a person then you will see everything personal. I don't. Mm. So that's a major difference with when I was a bag of trouble and now just being. Yeah. I don't take things personal, I don't see it as personal. And there's a funny thing, when you, th you believe when you're, that you're a person, you immediately believe in a free will. Well, okay, will yourself enlightened then or smarter than you are, or always happy, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, th this, this whole free will thing is a lie. I happen to happen this way. I didn't make myself 
this way. Mm -hmm. if, if I was in control, I would be much smarter and wiser and nicer and richer and whatever, what you can imagine, you know. It's not up to me. Mm -hmm. Because there is no me. It's just this functioning. Yes. So then, you can also be identified with consciousness, right? I don't know. That's another thing you that I heard. You are consciousness. Yeah, but it, it, it's something else. If you refer to something, then try to be ad identified with that. I never say that. Hmm. There's a possibility to discover to discover something, but trying to identify <laughs> that's the same ego trying to be something else yeah yeah I don't get that well I'm asking the question because I'm thinking like what like who the fuck am I am I the body the the subtle ego the consciousness or witness consciousness or God or awareness or like you're so many things yeah well it, it teaches you one thing that you are playing around with concepts that are second hand you gotta look for yourself hmm. and these words are just they're something like the, the, the road signs you're driving here you don't pick up all the road signs and start to study them mm -hmm. you leave them behind away with it, away. The, the way is away, away, away. Okay. So, so delete not... all these words and really try to figure out what's what. And there's an interesting, interesting thing. Most people start this question with who am I? Which makes clear that you believe that there's a who. And I. We, we didn't establish that yet. So we need to make it much more neutral if we really want to look into something. So that, that's what I discovered with writing all this shit down that I believed in. So one of the things was, who am I? And then I thought, why who? Yeah. That's already a premise, yeah. that there would be a who. Where does that come from? You know, that's just what I'm, I'm being told. That's who you are. I point at you, that's what you did. Or good boy, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's an imprint. Yeah, that's that's why I got also. You said you started writing down, and then uh, like I am scared or something, or I feel fear. Yeah. And then you started to question uh, like I, who is I, and yeah, what right. is fear, and I I was I felt very intimidated by that because. Um, it's um I journal too, like if there's a lot on my mind, I write it out, but it's it's like very intimidating to start to question um like basically what I want is release and like yeah, have of it, course you want to feel good yeah have but it I, out did, of I my didn't want to feel good, I wanted to know what's true, yeah, because feel good is easy. Whiskey. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. But it was not about that. I wanted to know what's what. So I started to look at what, what I was writing down and, and noticed there was a lot of horseshit and a lot of second hand stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at these words and I noticed that most sentences start with I. I don't even know what that means. If I don't know what that means, everything after that word. It's useless. So you started to, to look into what is... Yo, what is I? What is, I? what is being? You know, not how do I get a better feeling or be a better boy or whatever. No. What is it? And I didn't think it was inti intimidating, which I can imagine, but I thought it was interesting and the only thing interesting, basically. Mm. If I don't figure out what this is, how can I know what to do? Or how it works? Yeah. Or what what works? Is, is there anything that works? Is there even an I? What does it mean? 
Yeah. You know? And you concluded there is there is no I? That what that is what is seen, yes. Yeah. Not concluded here. Yeah. <coughs> there was no I, there is no center. There is no essence. That's the liberating thing. Yeah. Because if there would be, you could do it right or wrong. But if there's basically nothing, if you will, which is everything at the same time, there is no right or wrong. Yeah. Except within a very tiny context. Like if I want the dog to live, it's better to feed him. Yeah. In that context, that's true. But on an absolute level, then it's just the functioning. It's impersonal. And did you have any type of teacher helping you? Yeah, only on the on the scale of the energy work. Not, ah. not I never went to satsang or anything. And how about the role of uh, Nisargadatta? Yeah, well, they were my guru, but I never went there. No, I, never I just got you. a book from Nisargadatta, and in the same week, a book of Alexander Smith, and I read that, and there was just recognition. I already knew that. Mm. I just didn't realize that I already knew it. The work were the first two books which just simply, for me, said how it was. Yeah. Uh, before I, I thought that Krishnamurti was really close. I, I had these glimpses while reading him and I knew there was truth in it. But it wasn't clear enough. It was mm. beautiful. And then I read Nisargadatta and Alexander and I thought, yeah, that's it. And then I could talk about it, because I didn't have words for it. Uh -huh. So the recognition was already there, but I couldn't speak about it, because there was no language. Yeah. So the only reason that there is some Advaitic language uh, here is because of that. Yeah. could also have been Zen, or whatever. But it was that. Well, okay. Um. So as I just told you, I, I myself am a, <coughs> a devotee of Adi Da. Yeah. You know him? Yeah, of course. I read that too. I read about it, anything. Okay. Can you not, share? Not the last few years. I, I, I'm totally not interested in teachers and okay. spirituality or Advaita. So I'd rather read Schopenhauer. Or well, would you Would you mind sharing how you feel about Adi Da's work? That, that he has some brilliant insight and that it's a cult, and I don't like it. Adidam, you mean, is a cult? Yeah. And wh what about it? What I makes don't it? like cults. It enslaves people. But I read some of his books, and there, were th there was stuff in it that I recognized, because mm -hmm. I'd seen the same. So, brilliant mind, and then some annoying stuff, like mm -hmm. pretending to be the whatever great and the best, and think that's so sad mm. you know and th that's a, a general part in cults always a teacher pretending to be the highest whatever yeah, really come on mm. that's ego simple as that mm. so that's that's too bad but there's in a lot of people a mixture of great insight and all kinds of unresolved stuff Mm. Oh, okay. And you would say that in Adida there was unresolved yes, of course. stuff that gave way to yes. cultism. Yes, and there's always people who love that. I've had a center for nine years and you could see that happening there as well. Yeah. Structures, hierarchies, people trying to whatever. Yeah. And I noticed that and I noticed that there were some parts in me that, that liked that. And I didn't like that, so I pulled the plug, because okay. it's unhealthy. I think Nisa Gadatta had a similar um, devotional yep. form also around him. Would you would you always say like in in him too that was unresolved? No, because he didn't didn't really have an ashram or anything. Just people coming and going, and if he didn't like people, he kicked them out. But well, people were doing like pujas and stuff. On, yeah, yeah, of course. Right. And so. and I've understood. If correctly, I never went there, so it's all second hand. Mm -hmm. That he did that to not offend the uh, the natives. Oh, okay. 
So he pretended to talk about God because that was okay. And then he didn't and talked Advaita, mostly to Westerners. Yeah. Because the, the people who were living there didn't really like that. So you had to be careful. Okay. So, he so then it's very handy to walk around with uh, incense and girlandas and whatever and sing bhajans. Mm -hmm. I think he basically hated that. I would. Okay. Um, I have another question about understanding because I just ask you this question like I can be this, I can be that, I can be that. Help me understand who I am. Um, do you think that is useful to want to understand things or is that the symptom of having a mind no, that is popping up. Just some people have an interest in these kind of questions and other people want to make money or be famous. So mm -hmm. It's just how in that organism, organism the functioning is functioning. Mm -hmm. There's nothing personal about it. It just happens to be that way for now. Yeah. As mm -hmm. long as it lasts. Yeah. Well, because what I get sometimes is, well, the fact that you're asking the question means that you are identified with, of course, with mind. Of course. So, but, but from which other standpoint you would ask a question, if you just are, mm -hmm. there's nothing to ask, except yeah. for uh, where are my keys or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. something useful. Yeah. But in that, from that perspective, would you encourage people to ask questions, or rather emphasize uh, what they are prior to mind? Yeah, that depends. Or is both can both yeah. be helpful? Yeah. And I don't mind anything basically, because I have no plan. Mm. So if there's interviews or um, one-on-ones, I mean, or satsangs, people can ask or do whatever they like. Mm. And I have no plan, and I'm not aiming for any results, so the response from this point is just spontaneous, and I never know what I will say. Mm -hmm. There's no script, or... <laughs> yeah, I can feel that. I'm not going anywhere, you know? Yeah. So it could be anything, and it could be encouraging somebody to do this, and three minutes later discouraging somebody else from doing that. Mm -hmm. It all depends. I'm, I'm basically only interested in if there's openness, that, that's interesting, and what is needed, the, the, the individual in front of me, what does he or she need to move a bit? Yeah. So Could be anything. So now you have like interacted with me. Can you say like, or can you estimate like what would be a good thing for me to move? To listen to your impulses, mm. to be honest, to don't lie. And that's basically, that goes for everybody. We all have a sort of navigational system that we don't use very well, mm. because we think we know better. Well, one of the discoveries here was that I don't. I'm too stupid. You know, the brain capacity is quite big in any human, but not big enough to comprehend all the variables in totality mm. that are influencing us from the past, the present, uh, images, thinking, how much coffee did you have, everything. You know? And we think we can control that and, and know what is right or wrong. <laughs> it's so arrogant. Mm. I don't know. But I can listen. It's easy to be, because before you try anything you already are. So, well, that's settled. Being is settled. That's not a problem. And then you can listen or try to be so arrogant that you think you can know better than whatever is occurring. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. I just listen. And things come to me. Where most people, and also I did that in the past, I tried to chase things. Yeah. I'm always running around in the wrong direction. Yeah. Like
like somebody <laughs> used to say, uh, speed is, is not an advantage if you're running the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, there's another little thing. You can notice that whatever you think or feel, or whatever physical sensations there are, or so-called external sounds, they are all noticed. Something is noticing it all the time. And it's never worried. It basically doesn't care. Well, you could also um, get that into your sense of awareness. Mm. It's always quiet, it's always open, it's always clear. It has no past, it has no future, it has no interest in whatever outcome. It's never trying to force anything, it never says no, it never says yes either. It's just there, this completeness or whatever you want to call it. And that's, that's prior to everything that I would try to do or try to want refuse or whatever. Mm. So completeness for me is the starting point, not a goal. It's already there and it's free. It needs no maintenance. It's already there. Well, if, if we can sense that, we don't have to identify with it per se, but if we can sense that at least, there's a sort of a relaxation and then you just have, what is life, uh, some time to piss away as pleasantly as possible. Well, what is pleasant to give your energy, if you will, to something of interest to you. It might not interest anybody else, it doesn't matter. Well, like I said, I like music more than sculpturing. Mm -hmm. So, the energy went that way for a while. Now, three years ago, it stopped. But there's no hole in my existence. I don't miss it. Maybe it will never return. So what? Because, like I said before, I'm not a musician or a teacher. It's just an activity that's occurring. Mm -hmm. It's a role or entertainment, whatever. It's not important. And you don't think uh, your work is important to no, the world? No, of course not. No? Why? It just turned out to be that way. I'm, I'm useless as a cake baker. So, because I don't give a shit about food, basically, mm. <laughs> you know. So, it was this. This was fitting for this organism. He was always, like, sharing sh shit. Music, poems, toys, as a boy. Had a lot of toys, other people didn't. So, let's play together, you know. Uh -huh. Well, he, he discovers three or four things, and he likes to share it. And turned out to be a job. I didn't plan that. Mm. And in 2009 it stopped. And it could have turned out that I would return to a factory or do something else or be a mailman. I didn't care. But it turned out to be this again. Mm. Okay. You'll find either way. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any questions? It's already answered. <laughs> okay. Um, because you don't believe in it. Yeah. So you cannot draw, shed a light on it. No, things that don't exist, it's hard to talk about. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Um, anything you want to add? Uh, just that I hope that you will listen. Yeah. Um, I'll go for it. You know, maybe realization, or whatever we want to call it, it's not, uh, well, it's not for everyone uh, anyway. But living a life as an adult, like a completeness, is very possible. Mm. We just have to discern between the voice of fear, which we call ego, and the voice of silence, maybe.
because when intuition speaks, it's very short, very calm. It just says, don't do this, or like the tom tom, turn around. It doesn't care if you do or listen or not. It doesn't say, I told you, or anything. That's ego. You know, and when ego tries to convince you of something, it's always you can feel the nervousness in it. If you don't, it's always like that. Mm. So it's for me like I was trying to say: I know what's a tiger and what's a bear. You know, they sound different. So ego is always stressy, always fear, always projecting ne negative outcomes into the future. Intuition never does. It, it also never explains why. Ego tries to explain everything. Intuition just says, no girl, don't do that. Or, pack up your shit, go. That's already too much words. Intuition is really short. Mm. Go. Travel. And then, <laughs> it won't say it again usually. Just once, like, like a, a 120 year old woman a friend of yours who has no interest in life anymore just looks at you at you and says this and then stirs the pot a bit and looks out the window and, you know it just just yeah like that it's simple very well um last question if there is anybody who is intrigued by your um, work, what would be the best way for them to get more into it? You get to the web website and see what you like. There are articles, there are books, there are meetings, there are sessions, there's a YouTube channel with a lot of stuff. Okay. So. Okay. All clear. And then, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> cool.